welcome to episode three of ETCS Bites Back, where we continue to look at the level of supervision. In the last item, we looked at level one, which has intermittent transmission. Messages are sent from the trackside using Belize groups. Until the train passes over a new Belize group, the information stored on board is not updated. That can be a problem, particularly when trains are following closely behind each other, meaning that the second train is being slowed down unnecessarily. So the alternative is to move to radio-based communications. In radio-based communications, the track side can send information to the train at any time. It also has the advantage that the train can send information back to the track. So why are this, is this useful? Well, firstly, we have no need to wait to read the next Belize group or Euroloop as we would do in level one. We can update information at any time. And that includes the movement authority. So if the next section becomes available, the movement authority can be updated and there is no need for the train to slow down until a new Belize group can be read. The other advantage is that if circumstances change, and we need to stop a train in emergency, then we can use the radio messaging system to do that. So which levels are used the radio? Well, currently there's levels two and three, but in the future, they will be combined into a level R for radio. As far as the onboard is concerned, there is very little difference between level two and level three. Movement authorities are received over the radio, they are processed, and they are used to supervise how far, how fast the train can travel. It is really the track side that has a difference between level two and level three. In level two, conventional train detection is used, but in level three, there is the opportunity to combine that conventional train detection information with the train position reports or to just use the report, train position reports on their own. Level three also introduces the opportunity of going away from fixed block sections to moving block sections. In fixed block, each movement authority ends at a designed location. This is fixed in the design by the signal engineers who have created the system. Train authorities can only go to those locations. Whereas in moving block, the moved authority ends at the limit of the clear track ahead of the train. So as the train ahead moves, so the moving block movement authority can be updated to reflect that new location. And the shorter the lengths of the blocks that are used in order to control the movement authorities, the more capacity that can be achieved on a particular railway, the ultimate being with moving block. So let's have a look at fixed block with trackside train detection. We have two trains here. One in the middle is occupying a trackside train detection section shown by the red line. That section being occupied prevents the train on the left receiving a moving authority into that same area. Train in the middle has a movement authority to proceed through the next section, which is clear, and into the section beyond, so it can start to move. After a short distance, it will occupy the next train detection section, shown as red in this diagram. At this point, it is still occupying the section on the left and preventing the train on the left from being authorised forward. As the train moves on, it will have a movement authority that will be updated and the section behind will become clear, enabling a movement authority to be granted for the train on the left. Now in this diagram, I've used ETCS stop markers to indicate the stopping locations. But it doesn't have to be them. It could be signals. So you can have level two or overlaid on top of an existing signaling scheme. This becomes effectively a radio based level one system where the signals and the movement authorities are in harmony. 
But of course, you can also not have anything marked at the line side. The movement authority transmitted to the train enables the driver to get sufficient information from the in-cab display. In-cab display shows how far the train is authorised to travel and the speed profile that it must follow. So no marking at the line side is quite possible. And of course you can mix and match. So you may decide to have signals provided for trains which do not have ETCS and they will be spaced at a suitable distance for trains to be able to break from a caution signal to a stop signal. However, the section may be divided into shorter sections which are only applicable for trains operating in ETCS. So here, the train on the left has got a movement authority to the midpoint of the signal section, and there is already a train in the far part of that same signal section. So we appear to have a green signal into an occupied section, but that is only because the train is operating in ETCS. In the next talk, we will have a look at how we use the train position reports combined with the trackside train detection to operate in level three.